You okay? Mm-hmm. Here I'm going to walk through a glenohumeral injection in a lady that has significant osteoarthritis within her left shoulder. This is a short access approach to the needle, not a long access approach, which is the traditional approach. Certainly in any injection, it's best to see the needle from the shaft all the way to the tip, which is essentially a long access approach to the needle. However, in the shoulder, I actually prefer using a short access approach. Some of the reasons why I like short access approach for the shoulder is that it's a direct shot right into the joint. You don't have to transverse too much ground in order to reach the joint, and therefore you can use a shorter needle. Also, I find that using the jiggle technique or seeing tissue movement around the needle, I can very accurately estimate where the needle is and where the tip is. And furthermore, when you inject, you can see a little flash of the injectate and you can use that as your guide to where the needle tip is. Certainly, however, you should use whatever technique you're most comfortable with. And if you are comfortable with using a long axis approach where essentially you start laterally and then angle the needle down into the joint, that is the technique that you should use. Clinohumeral joint injection for significant uh, shoulder arthritis. Um, and this is a short access approach to the needle. So the whole work of this procedure is essentially before the injection, you want to anticipate where the needle is going to go. You have to identify the humeral head, the glenoid, um, infraspinatus tendon, deltoid muscle, and you essentially want a head uh, right between the glenoid and the humeral head, which is where her joint space lies. And sometimes you can mistake the great tuberosity for the humeral head. So you want to actually internally external rotate her arm and then you can see the articulation of the humeral head with the glenoid. And again here are the structures just lined out, the glenoid, humeral head, and the asterisks of the joint space. Right. And the nice thing about this approach is you don't have to try to you don't have to try to squeeze the needle between the glenoid and the humeral head. You just want to get it right through that capsule which is just posterior to it. Here we're going to go over a glenohumeral injection short access to the needle. Here you can see how the needle is essentially above the probe and the probe is in an axial plane posteriorly over the infraspinatus musculature and deltoid musculature. Here we're basically making the deltoid translucent and again we're looking at it from a bird's eye perspective how the needle is essentially lined up with the mid aspect of the probe. Now we're going in and we're doing a little jiggle technique so we can see tissue movement during the procedure to localize the needle. Here's the needle going through the capsule. Now we're making the capsule translucent. You can see how it's just poking through the capsule right above the labrum. The disadvantage of this procedure is that you won't see the shaft of the needle during the procedure. However, the advantage is that you can do a direct approach using a one and a half inch needle right into the shoulder joint. And you can really get a good sense where the needle is by the jiggle technique where you're essentially just moving back and forth the needle in order to get a sense where the needle is by the movement of the tissue around it. And if you go slowly and walk the needle down towards the joint, you should be able to get in with no significant difficulty. And I find that the patients tolerate this particular technique pretty well. So this is our patient, two parts number two. She did well from the first one. We're going to go ahead and do the second one. So here's her posterior lateral acromion. So you should go down a centimeter and over, and that's usually your soft spot. So I'm just going to have a rough estimate. I'm going to probably assume my needle is going to go in this region. So the right side of my screen is medial, the left side is lateral. And you can see you know, her humeral head, which is irregular from osteoarthritis. Again, here are the structures, humeral head, glenoid, infraspinatus tendon, and then above that, the deltoid muscle. So when I push, you see on the top of the screen? This looks, if, you, yeah. if you drop a straight line from there, I'm going to be a little bit too medial. I'm going to be kind of medial to the glenoid. Mm -hmm. So, and the muscle layers that we're looking at right now is basically just deltoid muscle. So I'm going to go a little bit lateral. Cut. Now when I push, it looks like I'm basically right over that joint. And here, um, maybe a touch lateral, but uh, essentially within the joint where you want to go. And again, we're just talking millimeters here, difference between two medial and just right. So I got, just focus on these dots. So we got three dots. All right, so there's my one. I'm going to go, I'm going to probably go for the one, actually. I think I need to go to the one all the way on the left. And what I like about this approach is it's just a straight shot. You don't need to use a long needle. Um, it's a, just a direct approach right into the joint. And I aim it a little bit towards the coracoid. The way that people inject usually without ultrasound. Clip. So 
So you can see some movement there, you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my needle. You don't see the needle, you'll see the tissue move. And here we are, we're just looking at the tip of the needle. You can see some movement of tissue. And here's the path that we just went with our needle going down into the joint. There it is. Right in the joint. Yeah, click. Okay. See it? You can see the injectate right next to the humeral head, confirming that it's within the glenohumeral joint. You okay? Mm -hmm. 